Hi, everybody. Welcome to my presentation. I'm Dr. Karen Aslanian, and I'm a data scientist at Elsevier's Tech Hub in the Netherlands. Today, I will present you a paper about utilizing textual reviews in latent vector models for recommender systems. This is a joint work with Flavius Rasingar, assistant professor at Erasmus University, Rotterdam. The main focus of this presentation will be on a new recommender system, which we created and named LDA-LFM. This new hybrid recommender algorithm is based on textual reviews and item ratings. Additionally, it allows adding extra user and item specific features to it to generate qualitative recommendations. This approach is based on topic modeling technique latent directed allocation and rating modeling technique latent vector model. The outline of this showcase will be as follows. Firstly, I will present you the motivation behind this research and the related work. Then I will provide details about the methodology and the evaluation of the model. Next, I will present an application of this algorithm and in the final part of the presentation, I will discuss the conclusions and the future work. During the last decade, the importance of the web services as a tool for businesses and electronic transactions has increased drastically. Due to its efficiency and the ease of use, online shopping and services gained large popularity. As a consequence, e-commerce has driven rapid transformation in the retail sector. For instance, during the last five years, the share of e-commerce in the global retail sales went from 7.4% to 20%, and this percentage has only been increasing. This increase in the number of online stores went in parallel with a massive increase in the amount of product variations. At this point, we may ask ourselves whether online shopping is actually as pleasant and time-saving as it used to be. And from experience, I think most of us will agree that in some cases, when we are looking for a product that has thousands of variations, then the process of searching and choosing a single item can be incredibly tiring and time consuming. To address this information overload, very often online retailers rely heavily on recommender systems, which help them to narrow down the amount of items they present to the customers from the front end. Recommender systems of a good quality can, in, can have an enormous positive impact, not only on the user experience, but also on the amount of sales and lawyer customers. Majority of these online stores have a special platform dedicated to collecting feedback from their customers about their products or services by different means, for instance, by five-star ratings or by product reviews. For a recommender to make a selection out of a large amount of product variations, it needs to learn about the target user and about the available items. Based on this, the algorithm can predict whether the customer will likely be interested in a particular product or not. Recommender systems are usually clustered into three classes, collaborative filtering algorithms, content-based algorithms, and hybrid recommenders. The existing recommender systems are mainly of collaborative type, and they use only the product ratings as means of learning about the user preferences. Whereas using additional sources of information such as product reviews or information about the users and items can help to learn better about the customers and products. Additionally, the existing recommender systems that are based on both ratings and content are unable to handle large data sets. Let us look at this figure, which shows the percentage of products that have less than 10 ratings and reviews with more than 30 words per product category in the Amazon.com. From this figure, we can see that more than 80% of the products have less than 10 ratings, whereas over 40% of the products have long reviews. This means that for many items, there are no ratings, but there are long textual reviews which can be used as a valuable source of information for the recommender. So this example illustrates that textual reviews can also be used as complementary information in case the product ratings are absent. To address all the shortcomings of the existing recommenders, 
In this paper, we propose a new algorithm where our main goal is to have a scalable recommender system that uses both product ratings and textual reviews. And it allows adding extra user and item features for generating product recommendations. This proposed algorithm, which we named LDA-LFM, combines latent Dirichlet allocation and latent vector model to predict review and item features when generating recommendations. For the recommender to allow adding extra user and item characteristics, we propose an approach that will extend the LFM part of the model. The existing literature in the field of recommender systems can be classified into three categories. The first one is the category of collaborative filtering algorithms. The second one is about content-based algorithms. And the third one is about hybrid recommenders. A work that I would like to mention is the paper of Macaulay and Leskovich, which introduced the hybrid recommender algorithm that combined rating modeling technique LFM and topping modeling technique LDA to learn about the latent rating and latent review dimension to generate article recommendations. This paper is highly related to our work, especially the way that it combines the LDA and LFM methods. Let us begin with the technical setting of our work. The methodology of the proposed algorithm consists of four building blocks, and we will discuss them one by one. Let us begin with the first part of the technical setting, the latent factor model, which is also known as matrix factorization method. LFM is a rating modeling technique that uses dimensionality reduction to predict and fill in the missing ratings in the user item rating matrix. This matrix is usually very sparse with large amount of missing ratings. And the rows of this matrix represent the users and the columns represent the items. The goal of the LFM is to rotate the axis of this large and sparse matrix so that the pairwise correlations between the dimensions can be removed and it can be decomposed into two smaller and denser matrices with the same rank. So if we look at a single pair of a user and item rating, then according to the LFM model, rating of a user U for item I can be estimated by obtaining the dot product between the pth vector and the transpose of the qth vector. But estimating the rating without taking into account common trends might lead to unreliable prediction results. One of those common trends is that some customers tend to give higher rates to all the products they buy than other customers. Similarly, some items tend to be rated highly compared to other products. Neglecting the existence of such trends can result in inaccurate predictions. Therefore, we extend the formula for the R hats that we saw in the previous slide by adding to it the general average of all the ratings, the bias of user U, and the bias of item I. So the goal of the LFM model is to estimate the rating of a user U for item I such that it's very close to the actual rating, such that we minimize the error that we are making. When generalizing this process of minimizing the prediction error of a single pair of a user U and item I to an entire sample, then we get an optimization problem that can be expressed by the formula that you see at the bottom of the slide. This objective function can be seen as a quadratic loss function where the tau stands for the corpus of all ratings in the training data. The EUI is the prediction error for the user U and item I, as introduced before, and the lambda is the regularization parameter, which defines the importance of the features and how hard the unimportant features are penalized. We use regularization to prevent the model from overfitting given that there are many features, including in the training data. To solve this optimization problem, we use Adam Optimizer, which is a more sophisticated version of the stochastic gradient descent algorithm. Let us now discuss the second part of our technical setting, the latent Dirichlet allocation model, which is used to uncover the hidden dimensions in the textual reviews. LDA is based on the following main concepts. Each word carries a strong semantic information. Documents discussing similar topics are likely to contain similar words, and these documents can be represented as probability distributions of these words. Additionally, 
Not only documents, but also the topics can be described as probability distribution of words. For instance, in case the topic is about animals, then the likelihood of the words such as zoo or species will be very high, simply because those words are very often used in the text where the topic is regarding the animals. There are three main entities in the LDA method, the corpus, the document, and the word entities. The first one is the entity of the corpus, which represents a collection of all documents. In our case, that's the collection of all reviews. In this figure, which visualizes the LDA model, the corpus entity is represented by the large rectangle where the letter M refers to the number of documents. The second entity is the entity of documents, which is a sequence of N words. In our setting, we assume that all the reviews of a single item combined represent a single document. In this figure, the document entity is represented by the medium-sized rectangle inside the large corpora entity, where the ND refers to the N words in document D. Final and the third entity is the entity of word, represented by the circle in the right-hand side within the document entity, and is denoted by the letter W. So, if we look at a single item, then theta d stands for k-dimensional topic distribution of document d, which is the same as item i. Thus, theta i shows the extent to which each topic is discussed in all the reviews for item i. When we generalize these entities to the entire training data consisting of the reviews for many items or documents, then the conditional corpus likelihood can be expressed by the first expression. So, the conditional corpus likelihood is equal to the cross product of the probability of a topic set being assigned to the jth word in document D, denoted by theta z dg, and the probability of the jth word in document D conditional on selected topic. Given that working with summations is more convenient than with products, we use the log transformation of the conditional corpus likelihood function. Let us now discuss the third part of our methodology, where we combine the rating modeling technique LFM and the topic modeling technique LDA. The key assumption is that if a product has a certain property, then it will correspond to a certain topic, which will be discussed in the reviews of this item. So there is a positive correlation between the item property and the review topic but one cannot simply assume that these two are the same because the former can take arbitrary value while the latter is a stochastic vector. So to do this, we use the following transformation to transform the item features QI to topic probability based on the fact that the original properties of both items are satisfied. To summarize, let us look at the objective function of the proposed model that needs to be optimized. The left part of the expression corresponds to the latent factor model, whereas the right part of the expression corresponds to the log likelihood of the corpus from LDA. So we obviously make a trade-off between the importance of these two models, and the parameter mu is portraying this trade-off. Let us now discuss the final technical part that forms the LDA-LFM hybrid recommender model. This is extending the algorithm in such a way that it will allow adding extra user and item-specific features to it. This figure illustrates an example of a case where three user-specific and three item-specific features are added to the model. What we propose is to add this extra information to the LFM part of the model as extra columns and extra rows. When generalizing this idea to random k extra features, the idea stays the same. That is, k user features can be added as extra columns to the user factor matrix, and k item features can be added as extra rows to the item factor matrix as long as the amount of extra user features is equal to the amount of extra item features because of the underlying matrix multiplication. Having defined the proposed algorithm, we also need ways to evaluate its performance. 
Firstly, we are interested in the prediction accuracy of the proposed model, and we use the mean squared error for this. To be able to judge the performance of the proposed algorithm, we convert it to four other baseline recommender algorithms. The first baseline model is the offset model, where the ratings are predicted by taking the global average over all ratings. The second model that we use for the comparison purposes is the baseline rating model. The third one is the standard LFM, the latent factor model, which we have seen before and discussed in detail as part of the proposed algorithm. The fourth and the final model that we use to compare to the proposed algorithm is the LDA first. Having described our methodology and evaluation setting, let us now look at the data that we use to perform the analysis. Our data comes from the largest e-commerce in the world, the Amazon Web Shop, consisting of 23 product categories. Each of those data sets consists of two parts. Feedback data consisting of 143 million product feedbacks in the form of the ratings, texture reviews, and helpness score and metadata about 9.4 million products that describes various characteristics of these products, such as price, brand, etc. Let us look at the performance of the proposed recommender algorithm compared to the four other baseline models in terms of the MSC. We will firstly compare the proposed method to the first two baseline models. Those are the offset and the BRM. This figure shows the percentage decrease or the improvement in the MSE when comparing the proposed LDA-LFM to the offset model and the BRM. Let us now look at the second part of the results represented by this figure, which shows the percentage decrease in MSE or the improvement in the prediction accuracy when comparing the proposed LDA-LFM model to the standard LFM model and the LDA-first model. What we observe is that in both cases, the majority of the bars lie above the zero level, which is an indication of a positive effect on the prediction accuracy when using the proposed method. Now, let's look at the improvement in the MSE when comparing the proposed model with no extra features and with extra added features. We added up to four extra features in order to find out what is their impact on the accuracy of the model. As we can see, there are many positive bars, which means that for all these cases, it holds that adding extra features leads to higher prediction accuracy. The green bars corresponding to the case where the most amount of extra features had been added are more visible, suggesting that adding more features help to improve the prediction accuracy of the LDA-LFM model even more. Today, I presented to you the work where we proposed the new hybrid recommender algorithm called LDA-LFM which utilizes the textual reviews in the latent factor model allowing to use ratings, textual reviews, and adding extra user and item characteristics. Additionally, it's a scalable recommender, able to handle millions of data points. We have seen evidence that this proposed algorithm performs better than other various type of algorithms, both collaborative filtering type and hybrid type. We have seen that the model leads to more significant improvement in the prediction accuracy when the training data is of medium size or large. Finally, we have introduced an approach as part of the algorithm that will allow adding extra user and item features to the recommender. As continuation of this work, one could consider using sentiment analysis for the textual reviews to further improve the quality of the recommendations by, for instance, classifying topic sentiments as negative or positive. By combining topic modeling, rating modeling, and sentiment analysis. Additionally, 
One can combine implicit user and item features from the reviews, which goes beyond the ratings. Thank you for your attention.